Hi, this is Dr. John Bergdorf. In this video, we're going to explore synthetic division. Now, this connects into a topic we've studied earlier uh, involving long division of polynomials. What is synthetic division? Well, if you think of the word synthetic, it probably brings to mind things like artificial or fake or man-made or not natural or something like that, like synthetic fabrics, like rayon instead of cotton. And in some sense, that makes it less natural, like a synthetic uh, fabric is not as natural, but synthetic fabrics have their advantage. For example, you don't have to iron them. Uh, synthetic division also has advantages. It's a little bit easier to take care of too, just like synthetic uh, fabrics are. So let's explore what synthetic division is. Now I want to notice one thing to begin with. It's a bit of a limitation. If you're dividing two polynomials and you want to use synthetic division, whatever that is, the divisor has to have a certain form. In regular long division, the divisor can be any polynomial you want, but in synthetic division, it has to specifically be x minus a real number. And that's true, for example, in this example, the first one we have here, you're dividing by x minus 4. Now, to inspire where synthetic division comes from, I want to do this division by long division. There's a separate video on long division. I'm going to go through this kind of fast, but if it seems too fast, you might want to go back and look at the uh, long division video just to fill in the blanks. So remember that the number on the bottom goes outside the division sign, and it has a much nicer name than the, the, the polynomial on the bottom. That is called the divisor. I'll just put that here as a reminder. And then you divide that into the polynomial on the top, which is also known as the dividend. So dividend divided by divisor. And the dividend goes under here, like this. And then you ask yourself, how many times does x divide into x cubed? Uh, or what is x cubed divided by x? That gives you x squared. You line up the x squared terms, like so. And then you ask yourself, what would happen if I multiply the x squared by x minus 4? x squared times x is x cubed, and x squared minus 4 is minus 4x squared. That takes care of that. I need to erase that, make a little bit of room. And then you might remember that what we do is we subtract these two polynomials, these two lines, but an easier way to say that is that we change the signs in the second polynomial positive to negative, negative to positive, and then you can add. So subtracting is the same as adding the opposite. And adding down the columns, x cubed minus x cubed is 0, minus x squared plus 4x squared is 3x squared. And then you might remember that we bring down a term. And we ask ourselves now, how many times does x divide into 3x squared? What times x gives me 3x squared? That would be 3x. I put that up here. I multiply my 3x by x minus 4, and that would give me, let me clean that up just a little bit, I made it worse, clean that up just a little bit, uh, 3x times x minus 4 would give me 3x squared uh, minus 12x, and we change the signs, plus to minus, minus to plus, 3x squared minus 3x squared, those are designed, we chose them so they would add to 0. Minus 10x plus 12x would give me 2x. Bring down another term. How many times does x divide into 2x? It goes twice. And 2 times x minus 4 is 2x minus 8. Yes, change the signs again. Plus to minus, minus to plus. The 2x minus 2x gives you 0, minus 1 plus 8 gives you a 7, and when there is nothing else to bring down, you are finished. The final number that you get is called the remainder. And the polynomial up here is called the quotient. 
and you express the result of your division as the quotient plus the remainder over the divisor. And it's that simple, quotient plus remainder over divisor. Now, what I want to notice in looking at this long division is there's an awful lot of repetition. Notice that, for example, every time we start a new line, we choose what we multiply by in the quotient so that these two terms will match, these two terms will match, these two terms will match. If you think about that, that means that if you're clever, you wouldn't have to write it twice. So, for example, I'm going to use my eraser here. What if we decided we're not going to bother to write that one? I'm just going to take it away. And that. And that because it's just going to be repeated anyway. Then I might also notice that I have some more repetition. If you look down this row, a column rather, for example, you see the minus x squared and the minus 4x gives you 3x squared. Because what you're dividing by just has a coefficient of a 1, you're going to end up with the same number in the quotient that you have in this step of your, in your remainder step so far. So maybe you could kind of like, oh, I don't know, leave that off and just put it straight up here in the quotient. And then you might notice again, okay, these are repeated, uh, the, the minus 10x and the minus 10x. Maybe I could get rid of, rid of, rid of yeah, maybe I can get rid of the 10x. That'd be nice. And notice that this two, oops, that this two matches this two, so maybe I could get rid of another two, like that. And um, I don't know, maybe we could even get rid of this one because this one here and this one here are the same. So that was a minus one, I erased a little bit too vigorously. So maybe I could leave that off and just go down to here. Um, maybe I just needed these numbers. Well, you know what, maybe I, maybe I go a little bit farther. If I could just remember that there's X's in all these terms, maybe I could erase all of my X's. Like that, and like that. Oh my goodness, and like this, and like this. And just erase all this and leave nothing but the numbers. Nothing but the coefficients. And even up here in the uh, quotient, maybe I could just need just the coefficients, which would be 1, 3, and 2. Just 1, 3, and 2. Hmm, that's interesting. Let's see where some of these numbers come from. Well, notice that, now it's kind of all messed up in here, but notice that this is a minus 4 to begin with, and that's this 1 times this minus 4, but I changed the signs to end up with a positive 4. What if instead of therefore um, thinking about multiplying and changing signs, we just changed the sign the first time and made that a positive 4 to begin with, which would change the signs up here. 1 times 4 would be 4, which gives me that. And a little bit later on, we'd have 3 times 4 gives me a positive 12. Here's the 3 times 4 equal 12 it kind of takes care of our sign change for us. So do you think you could do that entire division by just uh, thinking about those numbers? And you might very well say, there is no way, and that is such a mess, and I think I lost you down the line. Well, what I actually have just done for you is I've done synthetic division. Synthetic division takes out all the x's and takes out all the repetition, but fortunately, it's much easier to remember than what we just did. Let's take a look at it, and when we get done, I'm gonna kinda of look back and see if we can kinda of see how the synthetic division is really the long division, just with a lot of junk taken away. So let me show you how synthetic division works. This is very, very interesting. So in synthetic division, this is the exact same problem. What you do is you write down the divisor, but you don't write down the divisor with the variables. You leave all the variables off and just write the coefficients. Now, there's an understood 1 in front of the 1x squared, 1x cubed, and there's an understood 1 in front of the x squared. 
So if I write down the coefficients of the uh, dividend, they would be 1, minus 1, minus 10, and minus 1. And I'm going to write something that looks like a division symbol over it. Now, the like in regular long division, the divisor belongs over on the left. But I'm going to forget the x. I'm going to forget the x altogether and not write anything about the x. I'm just going to focus on that constant there. But if I change that from a minus 4 to a plus 4 then I don't have to worry about changing signs when I, add row, when I add rows later on. Now here's how synthetic division works. This is how you set it up. Just the coefficients in the dividend, just the coefficients in the divisor, but change the sign. Skip a line and draw a horizontal line and then follow the, the following pattern. The first number that you see in the dividend, you just copy it copy it down, giving you a 1. Then you take the 4 from the divisor times the 1 and you do this product here, 4 times 1, so the 4 comes from over here in the divisor times 1, and that gives you a 4. Then you add down this column, so you add and negative 1 plus 4 is 3. Then you take 4 times 3, so it would be 4 times 3, I'm running out of space, so I'm not going to write that, but 4 times 3 is 12. You're creating like a zigzag pattern. Add down, multiply up, add down, multiply up. Add down, negative 10 plus 12 would give you a 2. Uh, and then finally, multiply again. And I'll write this one out because I've got a little more space for myself. Take the 4 from the divisor, multiply by the 2 that's down here on the bottom. 4 times 2 is 8. Add down one more column, and you get a 7. And you might say, well, that's the silliest thing I've ever looked at. It sure does look fake. It looks synthetic. I want you to look back at the previous page and just compare really carefully what we have. Look at the bottom row here and the top row here. Notice that I've got the coefficients of the quotient are 1, 3, and 2. Over here, the bottom row is 1, 3, and 2. There's a 7 on this page. Do you see it? It's the remainder. The remainder is right here in this final position. And if you look at the remaining numbers, they are the numbers, the essential numbers, that we needed as we went through the long division. See them there in the second row? The essential numbers we needed in the long division when we got rid of all the copying. You know what this synthetic division does? It does the long division without all the repetition. And when you follow the pattern, looking at the bottom row, the final term is always going to be your remainder, looking at the bottom row, and the terms before that are the coefficients of your quotient. Now, if you think about the two, if you think about that as some sort of polynomial that has a one, three, and a two in it, the two would represent a constant term. So this would be a two, this would be a three x, and this would be a one x squared. So x squared plus three x plus two. That means the quotient has a degree one less than the quotient of the dividend, be dividing by an x, uh, a, a, a polynomial that begins with an x will give you a quotient with an x squared, not an x cubed. You can take that down by 1. And the result is a quotient of x squared plus 3x plus 2. And then you put the remainder 7, and then you remember what the original divisor looked like. And notice again the sign change from inside the divisor to what you put in the synthetic division. 
that's actually quite a bit faster. Notice we did get the exact same thing. Isn't that something? Now you might say, okay, I'll, I'll believe that's wrinkle-free, but I'm not really sure I can remember all that. Let's do another one just for practice. And on this one, I want to point out something too. So this is my dividend, and I need to write the coefficients of the dividend under a division symbol. Just like with long division, if you notice that there are any missing terms, you put those in. So we expect to see a polynomial with every exponent uh, between four counting all the way down to zero, but we don't have that. We don't have an x cubed term or an x squared or an x. We put in zeros for those. So this one that I just drew is the one that corresponds with x to the fourth, zero x cubed, zero x squared, zero x minus 16. So that's where the dividend goes with zeros filled in for any missing terms. The x plus two in the denominator, that's my divisor and that's somehow going to go over here but remember from the previous example that what you do is you change the sign. So if you're dividing by x minus 4, what you put over here is a positive 4. What would you put here? Well, you change the sign and make it negative 2. Because really what you're doing is you're dividing by x minus negative 2. And that fits into that x minus k form. So you change this sign and you put it right here. Then you're all set. The pattern you follow is you copy down downwards. So this would give you a one. You multiply upwards. And what you multiply is the negative two from the divisor times whatever is down here. I'll just put an arrow by it. So negative two times one gives me a negative two. It's a little messy, so let me kind of erase some of that negative two, and that's a one. So you copy down, multiply up, then you add down. So you add down the column, that gives you the negative two. Then you multiply up, and what you multiply is always whatever you have from your divisor times whatever is down here in this bottom row. Negative two times negative two is a positive four add down the column, that gives you a 4, add down, multiply up, negative 2 times 4 is negative 8, the negative 2 always comes from over here, same place all the time, add. So 0 minus 8 is negative 8, it's adding, and then multiply, the negative 2 times the negative 8 gives me a 16, and add one more time. And the fact that you get a zero down here means that this time there is no remainder. So all you will have is the quotient, which is indicated by the numbers in front of the remainder. The first quotient would represent the degree of a term one less than the degree of the dividend. So that represents one x cubed. And then you count down from there, minus two x squared plus four x minus eight. And then there's no remainder. You don't have to say zero over x plus two. Wouldn't be wrong, but you don't have to. So I'm gonna make that go away. And that's the result of the synthetic division. No ironing required. Very fast and easy. All you have to remember is that your dividend, I mean, excuse me, your divisor has to have this form, x minus something. That can include x plus something. Let's do one more. Oh my God, look at these fractions. Are you kidding me? So if I were doing a long division, having these fractions in here would scare the daylights out of me. Fortunately, though, with synthetic division, they're really not that much harder. Let me show you. So what you do is under the division side, you write the sign, you write the um, coefficients of each term in the dividend. 
This would represent the 1x cubed. Notice there is no x squared term, so I'd have to put a 0. Minus 4 ninths. Yes, it's a fraction, but we're not going to freak out. Uh, and then finally, the minus 10 ninths. We're dividing by x plus one-third. You change that sign, and therefore you would put a negative one-third over here to account for the divisor. Skip a line, skip a row, draw a line. Copy, so copy down, that gives you a one. I mean, let's just stay color-coordinated here. Then you multiply the negative one-third from the divisor by the one, negative one-third times one, you go up, and that gives you a negative one-third. Zero minus a third is negative a third. So you add down, and then you multiply up the negative one-third from over here times the negative one-third that's down in the bottom row, Negative a third times negative a third. Negative times negative is positive. A third times a third is one ninth. And so that gives me a one ninth. Add down the column. So the pattern is add, multiply, add, multiply, add, making like a zigzag or a sawtooth. Minus four ninths plus one ninth. That's got a common denominator. That's not as bad as it could be. That gives me negative three ninths. I'm going to write it down here because I want to realize that the 3 ninths can simplify down to negative 1 third, and that's really what I want to write. So I'm going to clean this up. And then finally, one more multiplication problem. We take the negative 1 third times the negative 1 third, and that gives me a positive 1 ninth. And negative 10 ninths plus 1 ninth going down the column would give me negative 9 ninths, which is really the same thing as negative 1. See, that's not so bad, even with those fractions. It's not too bad. Then we remember that the rightmost number in the bottom row represents our remainder, and all the rest represents the quotient. Ah, quotient. I don't know what I thought it was spelling there. And it's only the coefficients of the quotient, but we remember that my quotient should have degree one less than the quotient of the dividend. So that one represents one x squared. I can just write x squared. Minus one third x minus one third. And then remainder over divisor, I can put the negative here and say 1 over x plus 1 third. That's the original divisor. You can do division with fractions, and it's really not too bad. So that's synthetic division. It'll take some practice as you do your homework to get comfortable with that. But once you do, I think you'll find it super fast, super easy.